one of the main reasons was that I finally realized that I was accessing a lot of my power solely from the masculine. And the net net result of that was I was just exhausted. I was tired and I was bitter. Mm. Right. And I think that I was giving from empty. And if you don't, I, I think that I denied the feminine kind of conversation always because I pushed it to one side thinking that doesn't, I don't need that because throughout my whole life I was modeled to push and get the things I need from being more masculine. I mean, I looked like a feminine woman, but inside I was op operating from very masculine energy and that will only get you so far in life before you hit the wall and you realize something's wrong. And I knew that something was wrong mm. and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything on a material level. It was more of an internal shift that I knew I needed to make. You embodying this conversation about femininity was very powerful. And I, it was, it was, I was in the right place at the right time to receive it. Cause you kind of been on my radar and we've known each other for a while. So it was something that was always in the background, but I never really focused on it until, like I said, I hit up against this wall and I knew that I needed support. And as a coach, I know better that I can't always do it alone and I've been trying to do it alone. Right. So I think when you kind of came up this time around, it was like, it was the right person, the right time, the right place. Everything kind of aligned, you know? Yeah. been living in from the neck up for a long time and I, I denied the access I think I blocked some there was an energy block around this hard area which is very feminine and I'd lost this ability to create and tap into that creative truth right because I was so in my head and it was like the more I lived there the worse it got and it's like I couldn't hunker down into here right so I needed somebody to guide me back to that place, right? It's like I got lost in the woods and didn't know how to get back to True North and Paula showed up and look, I, I can get you back there, right? So I think, and to be honest, I think I always thought, look, I teach this stuff. I should be able to get there on my own. Yeah. Right? So there's a little bit of my ego involved in terms of, you know, I thought, you know, I should be able to do that, navigate that journey on my own. And it was just a gift to be able to, I think, surrender a little bit. Yeah. And that, that's part of the feminine right there is surrendering, saying, I can't do it on my own. Yeah. And I'm going to let somebody in to guide me back to that place. And so the experience was beautiful in a sense that you held the space. And just, you were a guide, really. I mean, instead of, a, you know, it wasn't this like, again, you, won't, you didn't come from this from masculine energy. It was a very feminine container that you held to guide people back to that place mm -hmm. and I was one of them and it was like a beautiful experience mm -hmm. I just think the whole space lends itself to surrender to the feminine right I mean I don't want to give too much away because it's like exquisite but I think that you created a space where when you arrive it's like <laughs> right you get there and you can exhale Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was beautiful and priceless in the sense that you didn't, it, it wasn't in a city. It wasn't, you know, it was, the container was set to completely surrender from day one. Yeah. Well, there's well, a lot of surprises. Favorite moment. I, I'm going to, okay. So I'm going to have to say without giving too much away, you, you have the women do something that you don't initially tell everyone that you're going to do from the start. And I like, really resisted it right? Because I'd stuffed that part of my womanhood down. And you do this, I think we spend a whole day doing this thing that Paul is going to have you do. And I was like, I don't think I can do it. I was in the room getting ready. I was just like, anyway, I'm not, without giving it away. But that's fine. after it was done, there was such a breakthrough mm. of ownership of parts of myself that I denied. And I just felt that <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I look, I look back at that moment and it's like, who is that girl? That was in me all along, you know? Yeah, she's there. Uh, yeah, she's there, but she was kind of hidden, you know? And there are parts of ourselves as women that get totally hidden and suppressed. And especially if you're in your masculine and to have those parts of myself reemerge 
with, with other women. Like another thing was that you do this experience around other women, which you wouldn't normally think would be safe. And yet having this experiences with other women actually healed another area, which is, you know, women can be bitchy to one another and they can com be competitive. And I honestly say that the women that I had this experience with and yourself, it's like they, there was just this friendship and camaraderie and support, how it should be with other women. Right. You know, I always say like, we shouldn't compete. We should complete each, yeah. each other. Exactly. And these women definitely did that for me. I think it would be, I think that my mission has always been, and this is something that I just realized coming out of that retreat, my mission has always been to live my truth. I mean, that's what emerged from this is my mission has been to live my truth. But if I deny my feminine and I'm denying those parts of myself, how can I do that? Right. Right. And how can I access my truth if I'm only living from the neck up? Right. Right. So I think it just walking away with a clearer sense this year, I mean, I made a, I drew a line in the sand that said my yes is going to be yes and my no is going to be no. And I'm going to live my truth and stand up for myself and represent myself in a way that's loving, not bitchy, but kind, you know, strong, but not weak, you know, um, and empowered, right? Yeah. Yeah not the victim and not the bitchy girl, you know, but to stand there and empower a woman and live my truth. I think that was my biggest takeaway. I think because I denied the feminine so much, I pushed it down. You know, I stopped having periods for like six months. So, and I was kind of happy about that because who wants to have PMS, <laughs> right? So I was like, yeah, no period, right? Right. Um, but actually it was, that's how strong and powerful I was to over how we choose to override the feminine we can actually it actually affects our bodies and the day I got back from that retreat I got my period <laughs> because I was so open to the feminine again and I was stunned that that happened at the speed right the speed yeah and I just thought wow that and I was kind of glad for the first time Mm. that I had because it was like I got my femininity back and that was kind of symbolic yeah right I mean I could cry about that because it was really a power I was like whoa how, how did that just manifest itself right but it was it was because of the work we'd done and there was this opening of like oh yeah the feminine can coexist with the masculine I don't need to push her away what would you say to someone that is like, oh, in the verge or like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it later. Or like someone who's thinking about this and, and something's calling, but she's not really listening. What would you say to that person? So I had this conversation with you because I was going to put it off. I was going to do this one that you're doing in April, right? Um, I think I said to you, look, November isn't going to work financially. It's not going to work. And you were like, I kind of sense that you're ready. And I'm like, I'm not ready. But then you were like, I kind of knew that I was ready. So here's what I really do believe. It's like when, when it's the right time, you know, otherwise you won't be watching Paula. You won't be checking in with her videos. You won't be having conversations with her about it. Just put the deposit in and watch the universe align to make it happen. That's exactly what I did with Paula. I just was like, universe I want this and I made my deposit and I swear all the dates all the money everything aligned because when your intentions is aligned with your truth and maybe your truth is you don't know what your truth is but you know you're supposed to work with Paula then put your deposit in and just watch everything align for you and that's how I've made and when I look back now about a lot of the decisions I made in life it was when I was clear about what I really wanted and I just put my toe in the water, the universe rises up to take you to that place. Okay. And, and it, it wasn't just for me, it was all the women in that group. We, I think there's a point where you ask everybody how they got to join you. And each and every one of them had amazing stories how they got there. Like how people hustled, something happened, and somebody swooped in. And it was yeah, like uh, everybody... Yeah, Angela in a week, she just went in. Yeah, I mean, everybody there had their own like story of how they got to be on the island and for all you women there will be there you'll probably have the same experience you'll all have your magical stories of how the universe supported you to rise up and be there